So that's enough theory for today. Now let's start Visual Basic and build our first program. Here I am at the Windows desktop. I'm going to click on Start, All Programs. You should see Microsoft Visual Studio 6.0 or Visual Basic 6.0, depending on what you installed. And then you'll see Microsoft Studio 6.0 Tools and Microsoft Visual Basic 6.0. This is what we're going to use today. We're not going to talk much about the tools, although we will use some of them in future classes. Go ahead now and click on Microsoft Visual Basic 6.0. The first window we get up is the new project window. Now there are many different ways to start new projects. A project in Visual Basic is essentially your program. We'll talk more about what projects are in a future class. But you can have standard programs, ActiveX programs, you can use the VB application wizard. There are many different ways to get started. For today, make sure standard EXE is selected and then come down here and click on Open. And now we're sitting at Project 1, a blank project, in Microsoft Visual Basic. You'll notice the Visual Basic interface is very similar to other Windows programs. We have our title bar across the top, our menu bar, a toolbar. There's also a toolbox going down the side here. We'll talk about some of these things in a little while. Over here is our big blank empty form. This is where our program will go. We'll show you that in just a moment. Over here on the right, we have our minimize, maximize, and close buttons. And if you don't know what these are, you're in the wrong class. Get your hands on one of our Windows Basics courses and watch that one first. And down below, we have a couple of different windows. A project window, a properties window, a form layout window. We'll use some of these in a little while. Turn your attention for a moment, if you will, to this Form 1 window in the center. Just like the calculator program that we looked at a minute ago, most Visual Basic applications will run on a form. In fact, most Visual Basic applications will have one or more forms. Here's calculator again. Just picture in the background behind all these buttons the big blank empty form. That's what we have here. This form is essentially our canvas, and on it we're going to paint different controls. Those controls are over here. We have buttons, and labels, and text boxes, and pictures, and so on. And using these different controls, we can create our own custom programs, just like Calculator. Let's start by building our very first program by putting a button on this form and making this button give us a little message when the user clicks on it. Sounds pretty simple, right? Let's take our mouse and find this guy right here. This is a command button. Go ahead and click on it. And take your mouse over here over the form. Notice that my mouse pointer has changed into a plus instead of the pointer icon. Go ahead now and click and drag to draw a little box. Let it go, and that will create a Command button. The name of this button is Command 1. In Visual Basic, all of the different objects that you will create, whether they're buttons or pictures or text boxes, will all have a name. That name is one of their properties. In fact, you can see the name over here. Here's the Properties window. It says Properties for Command 1. Right down here it says name command one. Now that we have a button on our form, let's go ahead and run our program. In other words, we're going to start up our program and see what happens when we click on that button. To run your program, find this little button right here. It looks like a little triangle pointing to the right. Go ahead and click on that button now. You can see our program is now running. Here it says Form 1 and Command 1. Let's click on the button. Okay, I'm clicking on the button. There we go. Click on it again and nothing's happening. Why is nothing happening? 
but we haven't told our program to do anything yet when the user clicks on that button. We haven't given this button an event yet. So let's see how we do that. Let's go ahead and close our program just like we would close any normal Windows program. And notice how we're now back in the Visual Basic Design Editor. Now, in order to tell this button to do something when we click on it, we have to give it an event. We have to do some programming. So let's double-click on this button. Take your mouse and double-click on it. Notice a code window opens up. This is called a code window. Now, here it says private sub command one underscore click, some parentheses, and then end sub. What does all this mean? Well, for today's class, you don't have to know what all this stuff means. All you really have to know is that everything that happens between this line and this line will run whenever you click on that button. This is a sub or subroutine that will run when the user clicks on the Command 1 button. It starts here and it ends down here at the end of sub. So everything we type in in the middle is going to go off when the user clicks on the Command 1 button. The word private just means that this subroutine is private to this specific form. Later on, we'll be building programs with more than one form in future classes. Private just means that only this form can call this particular subroutine. But again, you don't have to worry about any of that stuff. We're going to skip most of the theory in today's class because I want to get you writing programs. All you have to worry about is that anything I type in here is going to run when we click on this button. All right, so let's put an actual command in here and see the program do something. Now, I like to give myself some extra room because they only give you one line in there. So I'm going to hit enter a couple of times on my keyboard. There we go. Now I've got plenty of blank space up in here. And I'm going to click back up here, somewhere in the middle, and I'm going to tab in with a tab key. Press the tab key. That's going to move my little blinking cursor over to the right a little bit. It's just considered good programming form to indent your commands inside the private sub. Do you have to do this? Do you have to indent your code inside the subroutine? No, you don't have to. It's just when you build more complex and more complicated programs, the code can sometimes get difficult to read. So it makes it easier to read if it's indented. But you don't have to do that if you don't want to. Now I'm going to give you your first command. I want you to type this in, message box, M-S-G-B-O-X. That's message box, and then a space. Now you'll notice this little yellow tooltip pops up. Don't worry about that. It's just giving you some suggestions to tell you what goes next. But I want you to press open quotes, and then hello world, and then close quotes, and press Enter. We've now entered in our first command. Essentially, message box just pops a message up on the screen. And this specific message box is going to just say, hello world, whenever the user clicks on this button. All right, let's give it a try. Let's come over here and let's click on the start button and see what happens. Here's our program. Our program's running now. Let's click on the Command 1 button and see what we get. And there it is. There's our message box that says, Hello World. Click on the OK button. That'll close the message box and put you back in your program. Congratulations, you've just written your first Visual Basic program. Give yourself a round of applause. Just not too loud, because then the people around you will think there's something wrong with you. But be proud, because you've just written your first program. Let's go ahead and close this. And now we're back in the Visual Basic Editor. Let's go ahead and save our work. Let's click on the floppy disk button right here to save our program. Now, for some strange reason, the folks at Microsoft decided to save Visual Basic data files in the VB98 folder. 
Why they did that, I have no idea. But of course, if you've taken any of my other classes, I tell you that it's important to save your data in your My Documents folder. So let's come in here and find our My Documents folder. There it is. And let's create a folder in here to store our VB stuff. So I'm going to click on the Create Folder button. And I'll type in VB Files. And then we can double click on the folder to go into our VB Files folder. And now let's save the form. Let's give the form a file name. I'll call this my first program. This will save the form as an FRM file. I'll hit Save. And now we have to save the project file. The project file is like an overall master file that keeps all the information about this particular program in one place. Again, we can call this our first project. Let's call this one our first project. And hit Save. And there we go. And so now you see, in just a few minutes, you were able to create your own program, run it, make it do some stuff, and then save that program. You are now a programmer.